Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. I had a close childhood friend visiting for two weeks, and then I got sick. So, I have basically been away for a month. But I am back, and I have lots of videos to make, showing all of you some really fascinating things. The Path of Magic server has been coming along very nicely. Path of Magic is a no map, no portals, very hard mode, expand world prefab experience. A lot of the rules have changed, and it's all in an attempt to show you what you can do while remaining completely vanilla. None of this requires mods for the client. But in this video, I'm just gonna show you some of these features, just so you know that it's possible. First off, look what happens when a player dies. Boom, look at that. The player explodes, and not only that, but they leave some evidence where they died. Here's our little gravestone here, and you'd come back to this. And you could then loot your tombstone. And here there is sort of a record, right? That somebody died here. So there's this floaty sign thing. And this is so that when you see an area where there's a lot of danger, it's sort of clear because <laughs> there's a bunch of skulls. Most of the features actually make the challenging world much easier to manage. So yeah, you may die easy, but you also have a lot of different weaponry at your disposal. There's a whole overhaul to the spear system and the melee and blocking system. So I'll start with the spears. It looks pretty normal so far. We have a shield, I can block, you know, attack normally, right? Put the UI back on, use up that stamina. But watch this, if I throw the spear, it becomes a magic spell. So let's say you're fighting and you run out of stamina, or you're just running a long distance, you can keep throwing the spear into the ground. And so if you do it close to yourself, you can see that it restores, it's like 150 stamina, which is very significant. And it makes spears incredibly powerful and you'll want to make multiple because they're consumables. Eventually, they disappear when they break. Now let's take a gander at the blocking system. You see, on very hard difficulty, for most people, they end up just completely ignoring melee and blocking. So I thought, what if we did something to make melee more viable? So now you can block, and no matter what weapon you use to block, as long as you survive that first hit, you'll actually get a bubble shield, a hundred health bubble shield. Against an enemy like a Grey Dwarf, this seems incredibly powerful. But against most enemies on the server, this means that instead of dying from one hit, you'll die from two hits. And anytime you want to replenish the shield, all you have to do is survive a block. That makes killing really basic enemies like Grey Dwarfs much easier. But if you're not paying attention, you're AFK, and you don't block that hit, it can still kill you, even if you have good gear. And that's the true glory of having the world itself be kind of set to be very challenging. That way you can work against it and keep everything balanced, even adding really powerful, crazy features. And I will mention now that this Path of Magic server, the death penalty is removed entirely. So you don't lose any of your skills. You will reset to the level for, for zero experience. But aside from that, if you have 90 of something and you die, you still have level 90 of the skill. Additionally, you'll keep your equipment. That's because the world modifier on this server makes sure that you keep your equipment there. However, the rest of your inventory will remain in the tombstone. I personally find that this is enough punishment for dying. Why make dying punishing when you can make dying fun? The Path of Magic server features a totally separate progression from what you're used to. In typical Valheim, you kill the boss of each biome, get the progression item, and move on, and... Well, every boss altar has one of these runestones. And if you read the runestone, you'll be told exactly what to do. Each riddle on the runestone tells you what to put in this chest. So in this case, you can see that the riddle says one trophy of the boar, one full pile of flint, and one trophy of the neck. So now we have all of the pieces to the riddle, the full pile of flint, a boar trophy, and a neck trophy. 
And we need to put them in the right order, which is trophy of the boar, and then full pile of flint, and then trophy of the neck. And now we shut the chest, and look at that. We interact with it again, it gets struck by lightning, we open it up, and we have the boss progression item. All done automatically without having any mods on the client. And as you explore on the Path of Magic, you'll see that each boss has one of these special chests. It's basically a quest. You figure out the riddle on the runestone, which isn't really that much of a riddle. It just tells you what you need to get. So here we have our four piles of bone fragments and our 20 wolf fangs. These chests care about order, so you always have to fill them from left to right. And we go one, two, pile of wolf fangs, one, two, shut the chest, and then boom, hit by lightning. And what do you find inside? Not just the crypt key, but also some extra stuff to get you started. These are the materials to make a stone cutter, so that you have it a little bit earlier and can start building with stone. And the whole point of this is to make it so that the game isn't so linear. Instead of just going meadows, black forest, etc., etc., and then being done, you actually have two adventures. The first adventure is single player, so to speak. You go and then you have to go gather the materials to satisfy these chests and then get the progression item. After you get that, then you can go further along in the world. But eventually you'll be strong enough that you might actually be able to fight the boss. And the bosses themselves have been greatly empowered. I won't go into the details because there's a whole lot of different systems that have enabled that. Three different things, in fact. But for now, you just need to know the bosses are way, way too strong for you to fight unless you're with multiple people and you have good gear you simply won't be able to do enough damage before they disappear. Believe it or not, the features that I've shown to you so far are only a few of the changes. This really is meant to be a different Valheim experience, but I'm not trying to make it into a different game. I'm trying to make Valheim more of itself. And obviously some of you will disagree with me as I have taken portals out and I'm consistent that there will never be portals on this map. You gotta walk to things the long way and take forever to plan builds and transport material. And the server is gonna try and get in your way while you do it. And if you're interested in playtesting any of these features, currently you can just join the server. I mean, I've said that it's not out yet, right? That it hasn't launched. And yeah, that's true. I'm still adding things and people play on it and then they have ideas and then we add them and sometimes I take other things away. But you can join the server. Technically, all the information is available. If you look through posts and you find older videos about the server, you can get the information that you need to join. So I'll leave that up to you. If you really want to experience these features yourself, there's room right now. So I hope to see you here because to be honest, we could use a few more play testers to help me balance all of these features and make sure that they're working properly. And as always, if you want to support my work, then consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server. You could make a server and customize it to be the Valheim you've dreamed of without having any programming experience yourself. All the stuff I've done so far and shown you is done with some very basic scripts. So this may look like a lot of text, but you don't have to be a programmer. You can just learn how these things work, learn a couple formatting things. You can make the Valheim experience you've dreamed of without actually modding, without actually doing programming. And in a way where anybody who joins on that server will have that same experience. And if you're interested in doing that, I encourage you to set up a dedicated server. I use Zap Hosting, but you could do it any way that you want. I have guides about how to do that and a lot of information, so you can check out my other videos. And that's really helpful. It helps me earn a little bit more money so that maybe I can get a better computer and start making videos in 1080p. <laughs> also, if you want to see more Valheim content, then just like this video or any other video about Valheim, and YouTube will start dishing out those Valheim videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.